Hello, um, I'm Mandy. I'm going to talk about faking non-digital maps with digital maps. Um, I'm glad I'm late in the day because I didn't realize we were doing QR codes today. So here is hopefully the biggest one. Um, there was a link I showed on the previous screen. It'll have the slides as well as resources and stuff that I'm going to uh, be talking about. So here are some maps I drew by hand um, last week. And I think they're pretty, pretty good, but um, I'm really better off using um, digital tools to fake hand-draw maps. Um, I turned to QGIS for that. So this, of course, is going to have some uh, software-specific tips today, but um, I also have some general ideas that I think carry over to other tools. Um, I, I think there's some uh, John Nelson tutorials for ARC along these lines. Um, out of deep respect for John, I've never looked at them, of course. <laughs> Are we still doing that bit, John? I don't know if John's here either, but. Uh, um, I don't really want to pretend to know anything about real world artistic techniques or um, antique printing methods. I'm just kind of going for the vibes, the hand-drawn look, the old time look. Um, and if anything looks too crazy in these slides, it is deliberate, I promise, I know better. It's just hard to see things from the back of a bright room. So. So the, the number one theme here is that for a map to look less like it was rendered by a computer and more like it was done by hand or etched and printed by some archaic method, it, it kind of has to look worse. Um, and this map, I, I did draw this as, as an adult, and I know what you're thinking. What do you mean bad? That hedgehog is perfect. The rooster, it couldn't be better. But um, like this blue line that is tracing our route, I was really trying to be precise, but. I couldn't. It's, it's rough. It's uneven. It maybe wiggles where it's not supposed to. Um, and this is the key, the key human touch is imperfection. The hand trembles. It can't apply ink perfectly evenly. Um, you can't draw 300 DPI. And maybe Anton can. I don't know. But I think most of us can't. So in QGIS, I've tried to identify some essential uses of the symbology controls that, that help build imperfect styles. And I, I kind of came up with four here, which is using um, expressions in styles, using random numbers, um, layering symbols together, and then um, a few geometry generators in the mix. So most um, of the symbology panels in QGIS have one of these little buttons that I've highlighted on the right um, for nearly every option. And this is where you can define symbol properties by some kind of expression rather than a single value. And in this way, you can kind of build up imperfect, irregular styles. So that expression might be um, a basic data-driven thing, like a feature's stroke width is defined by a data attribute. Or it can be something more complicated, like a feature, it, you look at a feature's relationship to other features and figure out a, a style from there. Or it can just simply be random numbers and this is the way to add some human chaos. Um, these expressions are evaluated for every instance of a symbol that they're applied to. So for example, this dot pattern map here, every single dot has some randomization to its rotation and size and so on. So if you have a sufficiently complex style, you can really randomize your way to some human chaos. And when I say complex style, I mean something like this. Your, your line doesn't need to be a single line. Your fill doesn't need to be a single color. You can keep piling up multiple lines, fills, points, whatever, um, to make something more than just a simple symbol. Like this um, screenshot here is piling on like stars and circles with dotted strokes to make a kind of rough looking point symbol. Now, geometry generator in QGIS is a big topic. Um, basically, you can, on the fly, transform or create geometries um, in, in your s symbology, basically, instead of having to run geoprocessing, like if even you just want to simplify or something. So if you don't recognize the image here, it's the states are rotated upside down. Um, for my purposes, the important thing is you can use some of these functions to undo accuracy and precision that people have gone to great pains to put into their data. And I know I, ha I haven't actually shown you how to do anything. Um, here's a token screenshot of uh, some of the buttons for what I'm talking about. 
So I'll get a little more specific and mention a few things that are the basis for most of the styles that I've come up with. Um, these are not really styles themselves. They're kind of elements of styles, some ways of doing what I just quickly went through, um, which you can then repeat and layer together into something more of a proper full map style. So for one thing, straight lines are not allowed. I think that's not very human for most of us. So there's this wave randomized um, function in the geometry generator that really helps. It adds some wobble to the line to use the uh, Huffman word for that. So here's like the crazy version um, of that and something a little bit more subtle, which uh, a line doesn't also need to have an even thickness. Like I said, it's hard to apply ink evenly to the page perhaps. Um, or maybe the antique look you're going for is of a technology that wasn't good at applying ink, you know, in a perfect crisp line. So the way I do that is um, a sim usually a simple line and then on top of that or under it is a marker line. Uh, a marker line is a line that's made up of a, a symbol at some interval. And that symbol can be an actual little short line. Um, and then for each of those symbols, you can do some randomizing on the width and, and so on to get something uneven. If you can see this at all, it's kind of sausagey. Um, and then a little bit more subtle again, which may or may not be visible. And I don't know if it's just me. I often want to make things look kind of scribbled in. Um, and for this, I, I want to advise you can use point pattern fills rather than line patterns, even if you're going for something that looks kind of like lines, because the point pattern allows you more uh, opportunity to do those randomizations and so on. Um, you can use those little stroke symbols, and each one can be a little bit rotated. You can randomize the placement a little bit and all that. Um, I think with the line patterns, you'd probably still end up with something that looks pretty stripy, I think. Um, so this, like I showed a picture like this earlier, um, it, it kind of looks like you actually drew it, even though it's really made up of little tiny lines. If you want a fill that's more like paint or uh, maybe a watercolor, I use usually a solid fill and then on top of that, another point pattern. This time the point pattern uses um, some weird shape, like there's hearts and stars are kind of some of the default options. And you make those big, again, randomizing size, rotation, and so on, and then also blur them and make them in either a little bit more intense or less intense color than the, the base fill. And that'll give you some unevenness to the intensity of the fill over the, over the shape. And um, secondly, I, I like to do those in a separate, either a separate layer or a separate geometry generator within the same layer um, than the stroke, if there is a stroke, because in real life you would be not doing a fill and a stroke at the same time. You would probably be painting over the stroke or under or the stroke over the paint or something. So if you use those like wave functions, they won't exactly line up, which is I think kind of human. So not my best example here, but you might be able to get the idea of how it's uneven. Um, it could be done better than this for sure. And then I will add some more short tips here at the end. The important one being, since I didn't actually show you how to do anything, there is more stuff. Um, again, at that URL, it's my name.com, nasus 2024 or get that QR code. Um, it has these slides, but also um, an article that I wrote up and posted. It's got some links. It explains some of the things I just said a little bit more. Um, and maybe most importantly, it has some actual files you can download and load into QGIS and try out these symbols and adapt them or whatever you want. But back to a real tip. Um, I think in most cases it's good to be subtle with this kind of thing. Um, usually somebody drawing a map isn't trying to be sloppy. So all those random widths and things should be kind of just, just noticeable, usually. If you're doing um, antique styles, 
look for the, uh, you can't talk to cartographers from 500 years ago, but you can talk to modern day fantasy map makers. I imagine there are a number of them in this room, probably. Um, I think that community has some good resources, tutorials um, that would definitely be relevant for a kind of an antique look. But also with antique styles, take a moment to think about what maps you might be imitating, if any. Um, you know, some beautiful old maps were really tools of oppression and conquest or even genocide. So there are circumstances where your fun old timey map could in the very least be in bad taste. So think about it for a minute. And if you ever thought a little earlier why, why pile together all these complicated vector symbols when you could just kind of use a Photoshop brush and export a image or something. Um, yeah, you certainly can. I like to use the vector. Um, tricks because it doesn't require any assets. You can, it's just using stuff that's built into the software. It's easy to copy over to another project, things like that. But you definitely can bring in raster images for patterns and points and things. And I think certain cases would require it. I'm just not talking about it today. Um, with typography, if you, if you look at the person to your left and then to your right, um, both those people are better with typography than me. So <laughs> I do want to acknowledge it's a huge part of um, making a, a hand-drawn or antique map look authentic. But um, I just, I kind of got nothing. I <laughs> gave up a long time ago on being a, a type person, so sorry. Um, that's it then. So again, if you go to that website, that's what turns this into an, a practical talk, since I know it wasn't so far. Um, if you're interested in that stuff, check it out, download the things, and thank you. Give it up for Andy. Do you have any questions? Sure. If, we have time, time for one, one or two questions, if anyone's got something. Yes. Oh, Raise your hand, please. So Q, QGIS has a native random pattern fill thing, um, random point, uh, yes. random marker. But you did mention randomizing actual uh, point fill. Uh, they, they both have worked different, a little bit differently. Yeah. So which one do you prefer and why? Um, yeah, I guess I didn't mention it. I, I prefer the point pattern and then adding the randomization, not the random marker, because um, I don't know. I found it fills the space more evenly, more reliably, um, for most of my cases at least. Actually, it, I should say, when I talked about the like paint fill with the, the blobby, blurry things, maybe I think I might use a random marker fill there. Um, but for things like stipples, I liked the, um, the more even fill of the, um, the point pattern with some randomization in it. Um, hey, uh, I'm over here, over here. Okay, good. <laughs> um, Question, uh, why would you use QGIS to do this instead of, say, doing it like exporting your vectors and then doing it more in like an Illustrator slash Photoshop kind of workflow? Okay, are the tools for, for this particularly better in, um, yeah, in, in like a GIS software as opposed to doing it in a vector-based software? Um, it's, the tools are probably not better in GIS, um, although I don't know. I mean. I think there, there are some ways, like an illustrator, to do a little randomizing on things. Uh, I know Daniel Huffman's article on this has some of that. But um, I think it is a little easier in the GIS to apply those kind of randomizations. Um, I like to just do as much as I can in GIS before exporting to something. I should add, and I do say this on my web page, I have no idea if any of this actually exports well to SVG. So I'm kind of going for maps that are just going to be direct, directly exported to images out of um, QJS. But hopefully that's a bit of an answer. <laughs> okay. Thank you. All right. Give it up for Andy, everybody. Thank you.